computer. Good morning, or afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this. Uh, this is a class recording for October 20th, that is Tuesday. Um, and it's going to cover uh, what we started this week on, as well as the previous week's uh, end ending material. Um, I'm only recording this today because at this point, all periods have covered uh, the notes on intensive and extensive properties. And so that's what this video is mostly going to be about, uh, those sets of notes. Later on, uh, either today, no, either, uh, most likely on Thursday, there will be a video released on assignment number six, as well as the unit one assessment study guide. And so on the screen here, you're gonna see your uh, Schoology and how it looks. Um, all uh, material is now being organized into the unit one uh, matter and energy unit, uh, including last week's materials, uh, which should actually include this one right here. Uh, so that's what we're going to work, uh, work on. Uh, last week, we also had a chemistry feedback survey. So if you haven't done that yet, feel free to fill that out. Just let me know how I'm doing. And so let's take a look at the agenda. What is going on here? So this week, we are wrapping up the unit. Uh, assignment six is our last assignment, followed by the study guide. And so we're wrapping up the unit. But what that means for you is that make sure your evidence notebook is up to date. Have your notes be filled out. Um, if you don't have them filled out, if you haven't been keeping them up to date, use the, your, use the class one I'm working out of to fill in your notes. So let's say you haven't yet turned in or uh, you haven't been following along since assignment number two. Copy and paste these notes into your notebook. The point is to have a resource for you guys to access whenever you need. Uh, at some point, this document will no longer be available to you. And so that's when your version becomes more uh, important. So if you haven't yet also done assignment two, assignment three, four, five, or six, we haven't gotten it into your notebook. Uh, rather than going through each of these folders to figure out where each assignment is, right? What I would rather do instead is just copy and paste the assignments you have, uh, you don't have into your own notebook. So if you don't have assignment two, just copy and paste assignment two into your notebook, right? That's what you should do. And so the notebook will be checked October 30th, that is, Next week, Friday, I'll be just be checking for notes and assignment number six. Uh, this Friday, assignment number five is due, and I'll go over that in a second uh, as far as what you need to have done. The layout for this week, overall, the goal is to get past assignment six, get past the study guide, and have you guys be ready to take the unit test on uh, next week or this week if we can manage it. Uh, the test is fairly straightforward, 20 questions, five of which are short answers. The other 15 are multiple, multiple choice style questions. Uh, five of those multiple choice questions are from your pretest that you took back in August. Five more are about chemical and physical changes. And the last five are older stuff, you know, about accuracy, precision, percent error, that kind of deal. And so we can get started with today's lesson. Um, if you haven't yet done it, I am getting our notes on extensive slash intensive properties and assignment six from the week nine's material folder. Click on that doc, copy and paste everything into our notebook here. All right, before I start doing all of that, I do wanna talk about assignment five. Assignment five is about changes in matter. Let me zoom in here about changes of matter. And we did most of it uh, together as a class. So if you're following along at that point, if you're participating, uh, we should be at a automatic three out of five. We've got the analysis already done as a class. We've got our chart filled out. And so to get full points, you have to be able to do numbers seven through 10 on your own. A little clarification for number 10, you just have to create a single scenario where there are two physical changes and two chemical changes, just a single one. All right, so like I said, 
Today, we're just going over the notes on intensive and extensive properties. If you're in an odd period, this stuff was covered back on Friday. If you're an even period, it was covered today, uh, Tuesday. And so we are getting up to date with the, uh, respect to this. Um, so click on this one to get our presentation going. I've got a slide 28 where it starts. Actually, we're going to skip that to 29. And so, based on our definition here, an extensive property depends on the amount of something, amount of the substance present. An intensive property does not depend on that. So things like hair color does not depend on how much hair you may or may not have. It's just a fact of hair. It's just a feature of the identity of hair. Um, your weight does depend on how much matter you have. And so if I had like a bucket and a cup, I know which one's heavier because the bucket holds more water, right? And so what are intensive and extensive properties? Provide an example, basically filling in numbers 15 and 16 in the vocab. An intense extensive property does depend on the amount present. The example of that is going to be mass or volume, right? The size and shape. An intensive property does not depend on that. So we already talked about color, but it could also be uh, ephemeral things, really, things like about personality. So if you were literally reduced to a jar, a head in a jar, like Futurama, uh, your willpower and intelligence are dependent only on you. They don't depend on how much of you exists. It depends on you. Density for a more scientific uh, version is another intensive property. If I had a block of gold and a nugget of gold, they're both equally dense. You try chewing on one or the other, you're gonna find out how dense these things are. And so we just fill that out, we're set there. Now, we're talking about a video here and let me go ahead and play this. Hopefully I don't get copyrighted. Thank you for 49 second videos, Business Insider. We got a demonstration here. I'm a big fan of this video because it's an experiment you could do and see for your own self. All you need is two cans of Coke, one diet, one not. And it works with any kind of soda, really. Uh, any diet version of a soda and any regular version of soda, at least one that's made with sugar. And so in this video, we see that the two cans have similar volumes. They have the same exact volume, 12 ounces. But the difference is in the density. Their densities differ. And so as a little side note here, the density of sugar is about 1.59 grams per milliliter. The density for aspartame is about 1.35 grams per milliliter. And so that's not a very big difference, right? 0.2 difference, barely. And so what you have to consider though is you have 39 grams of sugar versus less than one gram worth of aspartame, right? There's a big difference there. And so that 39 grams of sugar is instead turned into water when you put them into Diet Coke. And so the densities are different. So Diet Coke, diet drinks will typically float, whereas regular drinks that are made with sugar or high fructose, corn, uh, high fructose corn syrup, those will typically sink. And so we're looking at extensive and intensive properties of this experiment. And to identify these, we're going to go back to our presentation. In our presentation, uh, the second slide here, uh, 
we have a list of extensive and neutral properties, and let's see what we could apply to Coke and the cancel of Coke. So we've got mass, volume, length, shape. Those are all extensive properties, and we could apply them pretty readily to the Coke. Right? They have the same mass, they got the same volume, they have the same size and shape. Fair enough. The color of the Coke, even though we don't see it, we could assume it's identical. The taste, mostly identical, right? Sugar tastes a little bit different than aspartame, just fine. Melting point, boiling point, we really don't see evidence of that in the video, so we're just gonna leave it. Density is what we see the most evidence of. We need to include that. Luster and hardness, those are mostly relevant to metals. And so if we're talking about the aluminum cans, then you could kind of apply them, but as far as Coca-Cola goes, these don't apply. And so, what are some intensive and extensive properties in this experiment? I'll just go ahead and we could get this done. Okay. Uh, we're going to go over here. Uh, extensive properties are going to be uh, mass, volume, size, and shape. Intensive properties are going to be. Uh, color, uh, taste, and density. We're going to focus on that. And so, if you take, if you want to change the experiment, let's say you get some Coke Minis, right? Coke Mini, Diet Coke Mini, versus the regulars, they're going to do the same thing, right? Density doesn't change based on the amount. And so, if that's the case only the size and shape, I guess, and volume and mass change in smaller cans. The densities stay the same. So the regular Coke will sink. That's it. So what are some other properties that stay the same regardless of the amount of substance? And we kind of already know the hint, MP, BP. We saw it in an earlier slide. And these are all intensive properties, by the way. The hints are MP, central melting point, boiling point. And these all have to do with heat, by the way. And so if you're talking about heat, you can't not mention conductivity. And so if I had like a copper fork and a copper spoon, the spoon typically would have more copper in it. But the fact is they both conduct electricity at about the same rate. And so size doesn't make a difference to how well, I mean, yes, it does, but like it doesn't make a difference to as to whether or not these things will conduct electricity. That's just the nature of the material they're going to conduct heat and electricity. And so for number four, we do this together as a class, but not happening here. We're just going to work on this uh, separately. And so these statements are all true. A, boiling, a pot of boiling water does have more energy than a cup of boiling water. That's true. And in, if you ask yourself, does the size make a difference? It does. And if that's the case, it's an extensive property. And so let's look at the next one. A pot of boiling water, a pot of water boils at the same temperature as a cup of water. Does the size of the pot make a difference? It doesn't. They boil at the same temperature. And if that's the case, this is an intensive property. The next one, copper wire conducts electricity. Does the length of a copper wire make a difference as to the fact that it conducts electricity? No, no, it does not. And so if that's the case, this is an intensive property, right? The size and length of the wire, it makes no difference to the uh, fact that it conducts electricity. And finally, a block of ice takes longer to melt than a ice cube. Does the size make a difference to how fast these things melt? Yes, it does. So if that's the case, this is an extensive property. With that said, with that done, we're going to stop it here. 
and I'll wrap up assignment six in Thursday's video when we get started with that all together, evens and odds. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's a little bit quicker than our most videos because I don't have my side tracks going on, my side little explanations going on. So just be aware of that. Uh, this is just pure information here. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have caught up if you are a little bit behind and I hope this helps you out. All right, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.